Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Obsessive Capulsive Gaming. I am the Obsessive Capulsive Gamer, and this is our full game playthrough slash review for the Night Slashers Remake. So, dear viewer, if you don't mind, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And yes, before you ask, this is indeed a no hit, no damage, no deaths, no underpants playthrough. I can promise I will not be hit or die in this playthrough. And I am indeed not wearing any underpants, so... And no, I cannot send you a picture. Bertram, see if we can find some information on Night Slashes. Bertram! Bertram! Bertram, why are you ignoring me? Bertram, turn around when I speak to you. Why are you... What have I done now? Have I done something wrong? What have I done to offend you? Why are you annoyed with me? Why are you frustrated? What has you so vexed? Get ready! What's going on? What's wrong, Bertram? How art thou, Bertram? What is up, Bertram? Tell me your problems, Bertram. Lay all your love, lay all your fears on me. Tell me all your issues. Bertram! Bertram! B oh, that's right, he went out earlier. Silly mistake of mine. <laughs> anyway, while we're playing this game, how about some jokes, eh? A mob dragged a man into a police station for running over 11 people while shouting, Monster! Murderer! Killer! The policeman dispersed the crowd and began to interrogate the suspect. The policeman! Tell me what happened. The suspect. Sir, I was driving home within the speed limit when my brakes failed. I had no choice but to either crash the car into a group of ten people or to swerve into the direction of a single person. Am I a monster for deciding to swerve into the single person? Policeman. No, that sounds like a difficult yet reasonable decision to make. But tell me, how did you end up killing 11 people? Suspect. Well, that asshole ran towards the other 10. <laughs> yeah. I've seen aliens. I've seen Bigfoot, I've even fed a few fish to the Loch Ness Monster, but I still have never seen a BMW driver use his turn signals. Not the way I, can. I don't get that. What's a BMW? Oh, apparently it's a car. What's a car? Oh, it's similar to an automobile. Oh, I see. Wait, what's an automobile? A detachment of US Marines are conducting jungle warfare training in the Congo. And one night around the campfire, the Congolese troops they're training with tell the Marines the tale of a cave in the middle of the jungle, filled with golden treasure, but guarded by a fearsome monster. According to the Luko soldiers, the cave is filled with the treasures of an ancient African king. But a sorcerer used his arcane powers to create an unholy creature to guard it. She was formed from a mix of human, gorilla, chimpanzee, and baboon, and stands seven feet tall, enormously strong. She has long locks of matted hair covering her face, tearing fangs, razor-sharp talons, pendulous breasts, and is covered in coarse fur. Dropping their voices to a whisper, they tell the marines that she doesn't kill the men who come to seek the treasure, but seizes them and mates with them, scarring their bodies and minds for life. The Marines 
are intrigued by this legend, and the slim possibility that there might be actual gold in the cave that superstition prevents the locals from claiming. So, the next morning, they have the Congolese troops guide them through the jungle until they come to the mouth of the notorious cave. They pause outside to consider their tactics, figuring that although the legend is surely an exaggeration, there may be some dangerous animal inside. So, a private steps up and tells the others that he enlisted to escape his tough city neighborhood where he got in fights every day of his life and people risked everything for a chance to get ahead. So he figures he's willing to face danger to get the gold. He takes a deep breath, marches confidently into the cave, and within seconds the marines hear roaring and shouting, then passionate moaning and terrified shrieking. And then the private comes running out of the cave, stark naked, collapses in front of them and curls up in a ball. The shocked marines realize that maybe there is some truth to the legends, and again confirm. A sergeant steps up, and he's a hardcore gym rat, was the star quarterback in high school, and is a martial arts enthusiast. So he figures he can take on whatever's inside. He strips off his blouse, flexes his rippling muscles, cricks his neck, and marches into the cave. Again, the marines hear roaring and shouting, then passionate moaning and terrified shrieking, and the sergeant comes out of the cave, fully nude, and runs screaming into the jungle. Now the marines are getting nervous, and not sure this treasure is even worth pursuing. But up steps their crusty old gunnery sergeant. He's a former force recon operator, been deployed all over the world, seen more firefights than they've had hot meals, and he's going to show these devil pups how it's done. He strips down to his tighty whities and his boots. He's just covered in Marine Corps tattoos, and he spits on his hands and runs into the cave shouting, Hoorah! The marines hear roaring and shouting, and then over the passionate moaning, they hear the gunny shouting, Get it off! Get it off! The marines rush into the cave, and there is indeed a fearsome monster, seven feet tall, flowing matted locks, fangs, talons, exactly as described. She's got the gunny on his back on the floor, and she's riding his junk cowgirl style, as she howls with delight. The marines run up and grab her arm, struggling to pull her off, and the gunny bellows, Stop! What the hell are you doing? The marines reply, But gunny, you said... Gunny scowls, I meant get her hair off her face. I wanna kiss this bitch! That was a good one. Wrong. But a good one. What does the Loch Ness Monster eat? Fish and chips. Hey, did you hear about the new giant monster that eats nuclear reactors? It's on a plant-based diet. I asked my doctor, what happens if you take Viagra with a monster? He said, you get scared stiff. Word in the street is, Cookie Monster has COVID. It's the Om Nom Nom Nomicron variant. Get it because of the... Never mind. To celebrate Halloween, the classic Halloween monsters decided to throw a party. At full swing, some of the monsters decided to have a drink and sit down. The werewolf said, I can't believe everyone came. Dracula chuckled and said, Yes, this is a good party. Frankenstein's monster then noticed something. Hey, the skeleton didn't show up. Well, maybe he had nobody to go with, remarked the swamp monster. 
This caused some laughter from the monsters before the jack-o'-lantern, who prided himself on accuracy, angrily stopped them. No, 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 yelled the jack-o'-lantern. It was the ghost who had nobody to go with. The skeleton didn't have the guts. Ha <laughs> ha. I've been Catholic all my life, and this is one of my favorite jokes of all time. One of the parish priests from the cathedral went on a fishing trip. On the last day of his trip, he hooked a monster fish and proceeded to reel it in. The guide, holding a net, yelled, Look at the size of that son of a bitch! The priest looked shocked. My son, such language is a gold fall from a child of God. The guide, thinking quickly, as he did not want to offend the priest, says, No, father, that's what kind of fish it is. A son of a bitch fish. Really, the priest says? Well then, help me land this son of a bitch. After a long struggle, the priest and the guide finally get the fish in the boot. As they marveled at the size of the monster, the guide says, Father, that's the biggest son of a bitch I've ever seen. You must bring it home and cook it. You'll never eat anything as good as son of a bitch. Elated, the priest headed home to the rectory. While unloading his gear and his prize catch, Sister Mary inquired about his trip. Sister, you simply must take a look at this big son of a bitch I caught, he exclaimed. Sister Mary gasped, Father, made the sign of the cross and clutched her rosary. The priest shook his head. Fear not, sister. That's what kind of fish it is. A son of a bitch fish. Sister Mary informed the priest that the Pope was making a surprise visit to the cathedral and that they should fix the son of a bitch for his dinner. Humble as ever, she said, Father, it will be the greatest privilege of my life if you give me the honor of cleaning the son of a bitch. And of course the priest consented. As she was cleaning the huge fish, the bishop walked in. What are you doing, sister? Father wants me to clean this big son of a bitch for the Pope's dinner, she replied. Sister Mary, the bishop exclaimed. If you're that upset, I can clean it for you. There's no need for such vulgar language. No, your eminence, the nun replied, bowing. It's called a son of a bitch fish. Really, said the bishop. Well, in that case, I shall fix up a delicious meal to go with it. That son of a bitch can be the main course. Let me know when you'll finish cleaning. Now, on the night of the Pope's visit, everything was perfect. The bishop had prepared an excellent meal. The wine was fine, and the fish was just as succulent as the fishing guide had promised. The Pope said, What a wonderful fish! Where did you get it? I caught that son of a bitch, said the priest. I cleaned the son of a bitch, said the nun. I cooked that son of a bitch, said the bishop. The Pope looked around at each other. A big smile crept across his face as he said, Well, I sure as hell liked eating that son of a bitch. You motherfuckers are my kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> what monster is best at paying attention to a speech? Mummies, they sit there wrapped. While discussing horror movies, my friend asked me who my favorite monster from films is. Me, hmm, that's a tough one. I think I'd have to go with the vampire from Sesame Street. Friend, what? He doesn't count. Me, oh, I assure you, he does. How does a monster watch a scary movie? It goes to a screaming service. 
Did you hear they caught the monster that was under my bed? He was under arrest. Why did the sea monster eat five ships that were carrying potatoes? No one can eat just one potato ship. I tried to convince my friend I saw a snow monster for the second time today. Yet he still didn't believe me. Frankenstein's monster went to a party. The bride asks him if he wants to dance, but the monster declines. She asks him if he has two left feet, and he confirms it. It's not my fault. The doctor couldn't find the right foot for me. A nun walks into the Mother Superior's office and plunks down into a chair. She lets out a sigh, heavy with frustration. What troubles you, sister? asked the Mother Superior. I thought this was the day you spent with your family. It was, sighed the sister, and I went to play golf with my brother. We try to play golf as often as we can. You know, I was quite a talented golfer before I devoted my life to Christ. I seem to recall that, the Mother Superior agreed. So I take it your day of recreation was not relaxing? Far from it, snorted the sister. In fact, I took the Lord's name in vain today. Goodness, sister, gasped the Mother Superior, astonished. You must tell me all about it. Well, we were on the fifth tee, and this hole is a monster, Mother. 540 yards, par 5, with a nasty dogleg right and a hidden green. And I hit the drive of my life. The sweetest thing I'd ever made. And it's flying straight and true, right along the line I wanted. And it hits a bird in mid-flight. Oh my! commiserated the Mother Superior. How unfortunate, but surely that didn't make you blaspheme, sister. No, that wasn't it, admitted the sister. While I was still trying to fathom what had happened, the squirrel runs out of the woods, grabs my ball, and runs off down the fairway. No, oh, that would have made me blaspheme, sympathized the Mother Superior. But I didn't, Mother, sobbed the sister, and I was so proud of myself. And while I was pondering whether this was a sign from God, this hawk swoops out of the sky and grabs the squirrel and flies off, with my ball still clutched in his paws. Ah, oh, so that's when you cursed, said the Mother Superior with a knowing smile. Nope, that wasn't it either, cried the sister, anguished. Because, as the hawk started to fly out of sight, the squirrel started struggling, and the hawk dropped him right there on the green, and the ball popped out of his paws and rolled to about 18 inches from the cup. The mother superior sat back in her chair, folded her arms across her chest, fixed the sister with a baleful stare, and said... You missed the fucking pot, didn't you? <laughs> That's a good one! When you're running late searching for a missing sea monster, let's get a cracker lacken on the Kraken lacken. Nope, I don't get it either. What do you call a monster made out of blood? A hemogoblin. What do you call an alcoholic Doctor Who monster? A cider man. A man with a 25 inch long penis goes to his doctor to complain that he is unable to get any women to have sex with him. They all tell him that his penis is too long. Doctor, he asks in frustration, is there any way you can shorten it? The doctor replies, Medically, son, there is nothing I can do, but I do know this witch who may be able to help you out. So the doctor gives him directions to the witch. The man calls upon the witch and relays his story. Witch, my penis is 25 inches long and I can't get any women to have sex with me. 
Can you help me shorten it? The witch stares in amazement, scratches her head and then replies, I think I have a solution to your problem. What you have to do is go to this pond deep in the forest. In the pond you will see a frog sitting on a log who can help solve your dilemma. First, you must ask the frog will you marry me. Each time the frog declines your proposal, your penis will be five inches shorter. The man's face lights up and he dashes off into the forest. He calls out to the frog, will you marry me? The frog looks at him dejectedly and replies, uh, no. The man looks down and suddenly his penis is five inches shorter. Wow, he screams out loud. This is great. But he is still too long at 20 inches. So he asks the frog again. Frog, will you marry me? The guy shouts. The frog rolls its eyes back in its head and screams back, no. The man feels another twitch in his penis, looks down, and it's another five inches shorter. The man laughs. This is fantastic. He looks down at his penis again, 15 inches long, and reflects for a moment. 15 inches is still a monster. Just a little less would be ideal. Grinning, he looks across the pond and yells out, Frog, will you marry me? The frog looks back across the pond, shaking its head. How many times do I have to tell you? No, no, and for the last time, no. <laughs> Get it? So now he would end up with no penis, wouldn't he? Because he shouted no like four times in a row. Very funny. Villager 1, flee for your lives. The mad scientist in the castle turned the tiny lizard into a monster that's destroying everything in its path. Villager 2, nah, why bother? We're doomed from the gecko. What did the Loch Ness monster get married? Wednesday. What kind of monster is the best dancer? The boogeyman. How does a pirate greet a sea monster? What's cracking? A stoner rubs a bong and a genie comes out, offering three wishes. The stoner says, okay, for my first wish, I want a six inch joint. And poof, a joint appears and the stoner and genie sit down and smoke it together. For my second wish, I want a 12 inch blunt and poof, a blunt appears and the stoner and genie sit down and smoke it together. Okay, now for my third wish. I want an 18 inch monster roll with a THC concentrate core. And poof, the biggest blunt you ever seen appears and the stoner and genie sit down and smoke it together. Finally, the genie gets up and slowly starts to stagger away. Then he stops turns his head and with a stony grin says, Okay, man, one more wish. Do you... Any of you get that? I don't get that. I don't get very much about that joke, but I don't get that. Okay, man, one more wish. Because he's stoned? with me what I I I that I, 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 I don't get it I plugged in a night light to deal with the monster under the bed tonight it's reading pet cemetery there was a mix-up with the organization of the monster bash this year attendees said it was a freak event Son, Dad, Dad, there's a monster under my bed. Dad, enjoy it while you can, son. When you get married, the monster sleeps in your bed. Which monster loves April Fool's jokes? Frankenstein. 
What monster likes weed the most? Medusa. She's a total stoner. What will the monster eat after the dentist pulled out his teeth? The dentist? What does a monster call his girlfriend? Zom Bay. I'll leave now. How do you scare a child? Tell them that the monster is in the closet. How do you scare a conservative? Tell them that their child is in the closet. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a political joke. And I don't get it. Jim hears his son call his name, so he walks in his son's room. Jim's son, Howard, says with a tremble in his voice, Dad, there's a monster under my bed. Jim, unconvinced, walks into his son's bed and looks underneath. There he sees his son crying and startled as he whispers, Dad, there's a monster sleeping in my bed. Jim falls backwards from the shock and comes to a sense of relief when he realized that he had forgotten that he had twins. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our full playthrough for the Night Slashers remake. If you would jump, what do you mean I actually got hit? No, I didn't. No, I did not. No, you clearly were not listening to me what I said at the start. I said I would play the game and I, as in me, as in moi, would not get hit, would not die, and I'm indeed not wearing underpants. It's not my fault if you misunderstood what I was saying, Bertram. That's on you. So, dear viewers, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't enjoyed it, well then, feel free to give me a thumbs down. But please remember the single most important thing I always tell you, dear viewer, and that is to always stay obsessed with gaming. Are you still here? Oh, you must have really enjoyed this video then. In that case, you had better subscribe to the channel and check out our other content. Otherwise, you're a booby pads. And no one wants to be a booby pads.